Hi guys. Today we've got something we've wanted to check out for a long time. Namely, it's to have a battle between the warlike red forest ants and the maggots. An army against an army. 1000 per 1000. This is what 1000 maggots look like. We haven't counted them manually, but visually there are a lot more fly larvae. And here's the anthill of redwood ants. We do not know how many of them are inside, and we cannot count them. According to literature, ants usually regulate their population so that their number does not exceed 1 million. Judging by the location of their holes, it is about 10 times bigger than a palm. By the way, about 1,000 insects appear on the surface at the same time. Just what we need for a confrontation. And let's start with a little local 10 by 10 battle, will we? Let's put a petri dish on the anthill and wait for somebody who wants to appear on the arena. And so the battle begins. As soon as the maggots appear in the bowl the ants immediately pounce and start a fight. Here, two ants jump on the maggot at once. Unfortunately, at the very beginning one ant gets hurt, apparently being crushed by a maggot. The larvae have no intention to defend themselves, they just crawl aimlessly, getting bit by ants. Here is the big picture of what is going on in the arena. It's a funny thing to notice that only the younger ants are fighting, and the bigger ones are watching from above and suggesting the most suitable tactics. Some kind of hierarchy. An hour later, the ants have managed to torture one larva. The total in losses is 1 colon 1, with the ants having a clear advantage. You've probably seen that the maggots come in white and red. It's not a different species, it's all about nutrition. We will need a beetroot and a grater to recolor the maggot. Beetroot is a strong natural dye, so let's put on a glove not to get our hands dirty. These maggots will go to a new diet. We put beet chips to them and start watching. The funniest thing so far is that all the maggots are trying to move in a clockwise direction. They seem to be taking part in land turning. So far, the maggots have only colored from the outside, but they should do this while they are eating. Let's leave them for a few hours and see what happens. Here's how the two and a half hours looked in time lapse. The maggots were still moving around in circles, with some beginning to dig into the beet chips. But there was no significant change during this time. Even though they are not white anymore, but they are not red yet. So we put them away for a day in a cool, dark place. We do the same experiment on ants. We do the same manipulation with beets, but this time we squeeze out the juice. We will not feed the insects, but give them a drink. We make sweet syrup for that. The ants immediately become interested in a new object and start swarming around. But, unfortunately, the interest does not last much longer. An hour later, the ants are still ignoring the sweet treat. This scheme does not work on an ant. Maybe it works on the maggots at least. After a day, the result of the experiment may be considered satisfactory. The maggots may indeed be dyed in such a cunning way. We'll set up the next confrontation between 1000 ants and a single maggot. Literally at once several warlike soldiers pounce on the maggot. These are all possible larvae and insects that form the basis of the red forest ants diet. And there is no need to go looking for them.
The fight on the anthill lasts about 15 minutes. Here you can see how one ant grabbed the maggot with a dead grip, gained strength, and with a powerful tug dragged the larva into the hole. Now let's see who is tougher on meat-eating ants or maggots. We cut off a small piece of fillet and give each of the battle participants. The maggots feel like they're crawling away from the meat. Not hungry, are they? Although meat is a treat for the fly larvae. Let's turn on the time lapse and watch. By the way, we won't wait for any of the participants to eat the offered treat. We just allot 5 hours for each such experiment. The one who has eaten the most wins. Offer a similar sized piece of meat to the ants. We don't just put it on the anthill, but also fix it, otherwise, they will drag it back to their burrows and we won't know the result. The clock is ticking. Five hours have passed and we can see that the maggots don't like the meat at all. Some of the larvae have managed to pupate during these five hours, and the meat has only dried out a little bit during this time. The ants, by the way, have shown a similar disgust for the meat. It's quite surprising. Okay, moving on to the next battle of one ant against a thousand maggots. The ant, like a true warrior, immediately attacks the first maggot it sees. What a grip! Then, when the larva managed to get rid of the rider, the ant got hold of the next one, then the next one again. And who says no man is an island? That's certainly not about ants. And it is impossible to crush it, it runs upside down and damages the opponent. As time passes, the ant decides that it can't carry home the food on its own, so it tries to find a way out and calls for help. Help is on the way. Meanwhile, let's have another extramural confrontation, for which we'll need some cheese. Let's dip a cut-off piece and start watching. As long as the maggots only taste the cheese. If everyone tastes this way, we'll be out of cheese in 5 hours. Turn on the time-lapse and watch. At the same time, the ants also taste our treats. They come up, bite, leave. Judging by the time lapse, there are more ants tasting the cheese than in the case of meat. Let's look at the overall result after 5 hours. The ants couldn't visually shrink a piece of cheese. But they're still eating. But the most interesting thing is underneath the piece of cheese. Tiny little ants are also eager to eat. Just compare their size to an adult. As for the maggots, they are no better, if not worse, than the ants. That brings us to the most epic confrontation of this video. 1000 maggots against 1000 adventurous ants. We put a glass dome over the anthill and watch. The ants seem to have some kind of zombie secret that they use as a last resort. Otherwise, how to explain why larvae dive into ants burrows obediently, one by one, and those who don't want get into a fight.
we decide to remove our glass dome. Some maggots have pupated, but it's unlikely to help them hide from the ants. Remember how long the ants were fiddling with a single maggot? When the larvae became numerous, the experienced fighters had to go into battle. Here you can clearly see how an ant doesn't hesitate to grab a larva and drags it into the burrow. And here one maggot is able to crawl away on half a meter, but ants get it too. We thought the main battle would be on the anthill, but it turned out that now the main battle is underground. Here's you can see the attempts to get out, but with no results. And another very experienced ant, you can see how strong and agile it is, but its opponent is a hard nut to crack, we should pick the weaker one. We brought home not only alive, but also pupated maggots. It's not a day, but a feast for ants. There were some larvae that managed to get quite far away, but they were caught by ants of a different species. And finally, here's what it looks like on the time lapse. You can clearly see that very many of the larvae didn't sprawl out at all, but burrowed under the ground like moles, and clearly in the center of the ant hill. I think the surprise there will be under the ground on both sides. That's all for now today. Bye bye.